hello everyone and welcome again to another meeting to the new geopolitics research network discussion club as for today for today's topic uh they are the following the situation on the front line uh, the second phase of the russian so-called special military operation the second is the increasing of the airstrikes on Ukrainian infrastructure, which we could observe this week. What could be the reasons for them? And the upcoming uh, 9th of May, a sacral day for the Russian regime. And uh, what surprises uh, we have expect from the Russian side. So let's start with the first topic, the situation on the front line. Uh, we can see the the Ukrainians uh, Ukrainian troop has uh, started uh, offensive attacks on the north and northeast um, regions from Kharkiv. So uh, in the upcoming days we can uh, expect the liberation you know, of Ukrainian troops of the you know, all those territory uh, around Kharkiv. The situation uh, in uh, Izum region remains difficult enough. Uh, the Russians are deploying the air defense there. Uh, but it also seems that they are redeploying their battle groups from uh, this Izum direction to the Severa Donetsk direction. That can make some conclusion that they are changing the direction of their main offensive operation. Ukrainian troops have retreated from uh, some uh, villages, uh, but uh, this treatment can be the only uh, serious Russian advance for the last uh, last uh, last days. And according to the um, situation of the fronts, it can be um, the last Russian uh, in this in this area for the next uh, for the next period. Also, we can see that the shelling continues uh, along the whole front line from Rubizhne to Severodonetsk to Avdiivka and Marienka. But the, the whole situation in this area remains without drastic changes. As for Mariupol, there had been evacuation conducted uh, during the last days. But uh, after that, uh, we have seen that Russians started again their uh, shelling the azul style plant and they, they started attacks on, on the plant. So we can say that these attacks, uh, and the amount of these attacks will increase because they have to uh, show them their, some successes for the 9th of, of, uh, 9th of May. As for the situation on the south, around uh, Kherson and uh, Mykolaiv, so the, the, the whole situation remains also without drastic changes. The main thing Russian, Russians is doing there, I mean, on the occupied territories on the Kherson, uh, on the Kherson region, is that they are trying to isolate the local populations of that uh, region from, from the information. Uh, coming from, from Ukraine, so they are blocking the uh, communication lines so that uh, Ukraine population can have the, the real information about what's going on. So this is the general uh, situation on the front line, so if you have some comments on that, please go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that uh, generally absolutely right, and um, I would like to say that uh, why they why they uh, stopping the uh, offensive operations close the Izum and trying to uh, move uh, the main activities on the Severodonetsk? Because if you look at the map, uh, they uh, tried uh, be kind of one month ago, they had uh, huge plans for this uh, Mirror Kursk uh, battle, let's say, starting from Kharkiv to Zaporizhia, we is going to close the circle uh, to the Dnieper city. Now, uh, uh, now they didn't get any success. After this, they trying to make a little smaller, smaller circle from uh, uh, Izum and uh, and actually from from the uh, Gulay Pole. If you if you look at the south and, and the northern part, no success there. And now they trying at least to have some success on Severodonetsk in Lugansk region to show that they they got something and uh, trying to to make some uh, instrument of some Ukrainian forces in this area. Uh, obviously, they don't have any success in general in this operation. 
So before 9, 9 of May, I, I could say that at least they try to the, the finish the operation in Mariupol, it's saying that, uh, okay, as we got Azov style, that it, uh, it's a finish of the story of Mariupol, and we are going to uh, uh, present you a great victory on this uh, 9th of uh, May day. But I, I'm sure that it, it won't be uh, even in, in the Azov style. So uh, I, I could predict that after 9 of May, after this uh, negative attempt on a different direction, like Izium, Gulai Pole, uh, Severodonetsk, uh, of course, the Izium, stopping on the Izium direction means that no operation on Kramatorsk, Slavyansk direction. So after 9 of May, it will be a new uh, stage of the situation. And uh, I could say that I hope that it will be a, a start of the conflicts inside of the uh, Kremlin system between Putin uh, guys, FSB guys and armed forces guys and Ministry of Defense, because everybody from this triangle will try to put, uh, put the finger on, on, on another opposite side. That obviously, that armed forces will say, we don't have any victories because FSB provide us bad information. FSB will say that you just cannot uh, fight you, you destroy all of our forces before before this conflict, bef before operations. And Putin, I, I think that Putin will avoid a general conflict because it will it, 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 it will create a threat for the stability of all of regimes. So uh, I think that after 9 of May, it will be some inertia of, of this uh, uh, trying to off offensive attempts on Russian forces. But obviously, in the middle of the May, it will be uh, uh, the create, creation uh, of con conditions for Ukrainian armed forces start active uh, uh, counteroffensive actions and after these counteroffensive operations. Yeah. So I think that uh, yeah, this is this is the finish of, of uh, Russian offensive attempts. It's not it's not just uh, trying to move some uh, focus on new direction but actually the result of uh, very successful Ukrainian defense, very smart and very accurate uh, defensive uh, activities. And I hope that it will be counteroffensive operations on Kherson uh, area, Kharkiv, uh, Izum, and of course it will debalance, like debalance uh, the front line on all regions. And uh, I hope that it will, con will create the conditions to create some uh, or, or organize some operations to for the blockading of of Mariupol. Yeah, yeah, I think that uh, your estimates uh, correspond with uh, the latest news uh, from the front line, uh, especially uh, one of the latest news was about uh, Russian assaults on the Belohorivka and uh, uh, continuing advances uh, near Rubizhne city. So that means that Russians tried to encircle uh, Ukrainian troops that, that still defend Severodonetsk and uh, Lysychansk agglomeration. Uh, obviously, uh, Russians understand that uh, if they will try to push uh, directly throughout this agglomeration, they will waste several battalion tactic groups and they may achieve no success. So the main goal for Russians is to encircle Ukrainian troops in Lugansk Oblast and try to retake uh, the whole Lugansk Oblast until the end of the May. I think that uh, in the region of Severodonetsk and uh, Lysychansk, uh, Ukrainian troops may defend uh, these positions for, for, for quite a long time and uh, exhaust uh, Russian uh, troops there. Uh, also, to my estimate, uh, there is a possibility that uh, in several weeks, maybe one or two Ukrainian troops may withdraw uh, from the eastern bank of uh, uh, Seversky Donetsk River. As we know, the most bridges uh, blown up. That means that uh, such scenario is prepared by uh, Ukrainian general staff, but still the landscape uh, there poses uh, big possibilities for for the side that, that defend these positions. These regions are quite forested and that uh, make us uh, great possibilities in terms of operations of sabotage there. 
So the, the main goal may be to use uh, the river, Siversky Donetsk River, as a natural barrier to defend uh, our positions on the outreaks of uh, the Slovensk city and Kramatorsk. So that is my point for upcoming weeks. So we can, we can, on this question, we can assume that the, the lack of successes will cause the problems within the, the Putin's, Putin's regime. And the question is uh, whether, whether Putin will declare the, the general mobilization. But this is the, the, our uh, third question. We will discuss this, but it's, it's, it's very interesting question. Uh, everybody talks about it. Uh, you're in the last, uh, last, last week and a lot of ideas, so we'll express our ideas. So let, let's get to uh, the second question, which is the decreasing of air strikes, which we could uh, witness uh, this week with the air strikes on Ukrainian uh, infrastructure. Um, so um, the 3rd of May, Russia launched around 20 rockets on uh, Ukrainian territory, despite uh, the major part of them were uh, destroyed by our air defense, uh, the rest of them made uh, caused the damage to, to Ukrainian uh, infrastructure, uh, especially to our or railway infrastructure. What are the, the, the reasons for these airstrikes? I think that the main reason the active uh, supply of Ukraine by the uh, Western weapons and the munitions. So Russia in such a way want to, to prevent this and uh, they want to destroy our, our railway uh, routes. Also there was one strike to uh, um, one strike on the uh, bridge across the Dnipro river in, in the uh, city of Dnipro uh, which uh, Russia uh, didn't do uh, before. Um, nevertheless, uh, it's, uh, I think it's, it is a very difficult task for Russia to describe, to, to destroy these uh, supply routes, because uh, first we still have the air defense. Russia million times uh, claimed that they, the, the, the troops destroyed our uh, air defense, but the air defense continued to destroy Russian. Uh, rockets. Uh, secondly, uh, now we see that Russia is using uh, the, the HA missiles, which are launching from the bombers, and their accuracy is not as, as good as uh, this um, caliber missiles, for example. So they are not hitting the, the, the very targets on the Ukrainian terrain. And the th third thing is that uh, despite the railway is the, the, the main route for deploying the, the, the ammunition and, and, and weapon to, be, to the east. Uh, but it, it is not the only way. So uh, there are a lot of different ways to, to, to send this uh, to, uh, ammunition and weapon to, to, the, to the east. Nevertheless, the, the threat exists. And I can say that uh, Russia will continue and will increase these airstrikes. So this is another proof that uh, we need air defense, the air defense to, to counter these Russian airstrikes. Uh, absolutely sure that uh, Russians is trying to uh, uh, destroy our uh, supply lines uh, after the land lease and all of this. Uh, Rammstein coalition decisions that uh, Ukraine will definitely get more and more Western uh, weapons. They, the Russians finally started to to uh, react because they uh, before they were told it's uh, nothing uh, nothing changed on the battlefield. Of course, it changed. You know they started to to destroy uh, the railways uh, capacities. They 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 hit it uh, mainly on on electricity supplying boxes uh, in in uh, main. Uh, interconnections uh, of uh, Ukrainian railways trying to stop this process but of course it it uh, wasn't successfully successful totally because yeah, you're absolutely right Igor that we we have a very developed relay uh, system and uh, it's impossible actually to to destroy it especially that Ukrainian I'm sure that Ukrainian uh, 
forces getting these uh, weapons and system not only by railways but of course roads and it, actually it's definitely impossible uh, to destroy all of Ukrainian uh, roads and uh, to stop the supply of Ukraine or of the weapons so I think that it was mostly a demonstration of uh, Russian capabilities on missile attacks and of course to use for propaganda to say that uh, you, uh, Russian forces destroyed uh, 100 million of, of uh, command uh, uh, points and, and, and other uh, targets as we usually use the Konashenkov reports trying to explain why they uh, are acting so long and so unsuccessful on, on, on different different directions. But uh, the, the key element, I, I, I absolutely agree with you that we need uh, more and more air defense, missile defense to stop uh, to stop these attacks, uh, especially uh, Russians uh, obviously started to use more and more uh, air-based missiles, uh, H-55 and other uh, modification. The paradox is that uh, these missiles produced in, in Kharkiv, in Ukraine during the Soviet Union, uh, it's pretty old missiles, but it's pretty good, uh, still pretty good to make some strikes. Of course, it's not uh, precisive as uh, as understands in 21st century because uh, when these missiles were, were produced in uh, the 1980s uh, they, they uh, were designed especially with nuclear warheads so for nuclear warheads 100 meters left or right it's it's okay it's it's no problem to destroy the target but of course with uh, a conventional warhead it's it's not enough definitely and uh, uh, you remember this uh, trying to destroy the the bridge on the Odessa region, very, very important breach, and it was three attempts with uh, several missiles in each attempt, and uh, uh, I'm sure it's, 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 uh, it, it wasn't successful uh, enough to, to, cut, uh, to cut the two halves of the Odessa region. Why it's important for, for Russians, uh, the, we could uh, forecast that, in, especially in this uh, region, they try to organize some marine cooperation and uh, in the same time, uh, some uh, even small attacks from Transnistria region were using the Russian uh, forces and and uh, Russian proxies uh, forces from the so-called Transnistria Republic, uh, trying to uh, close all of logistics and and supply lines and communications between uh, one half of Odessa region and other half, western half of Odessa region trying to occupy it and create an, uh, another so-called uh, republic in this part of uh, Bessarabia. So uh, I think that Ukrainian forces were, which destroyed uh, uh, some uh, objects on uh, Serpent Island last week and uh, destroying two uh, uh, fast, fast boats, a Raptor for special Russian special forces by Bayraktars. It was the... the, the, the Part of the one uh, Ukrainian operations to stop these preparations because I'm sure that they tried to 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 base some special forces on Serpent Island to base their air defense on Serpent Island to, to cover the area from from Ukrainian Bayraktars and aviation and after this trying to conduct the Marine Corps operation on the western part of, uh, of Odessa region and uh, trying to close the road through Palanka a village on the Moldova region, which is, uh, as I told, they, they totally uh, close the communication and, and uh, uh, logistics between two parts of uh, Odessa region. And actually, it will be uh, not very uh, comfortable situation for Ukrainian forces sitting, staying in, in this region. So I think that uh, uh, Russia, after Ukrainian forces destroyed these raptors, these uh, uh, facilities on Serpent Island, they stopped preparation of uh, Transistria because before we, we, we saw uh, some, uh, some process of preparations uh, in, in this area. Some sources uh, continue to say that Transistria will be used by Russia in, 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 in uh, absolutely next, next second when Russia will uh, launch operation on uh, Mykolaiv and Odessa from the land. In the next second, uh, they will use the factor of Transistria to, to create a new front for Ukrainian forces and create a problem for Ukrainian forces. So uh, uh, I think that Ukrainian side acting very successful in this in this part is destroying uh, step by step all of these preparations on separate island of all of these fast boats, which is especially 
designed to conduct very fast special force operations. So to conclude this question, we'll what can say can say that this air, since Russia have a lot of these old Soviet hot type missiles, so they will continue using them. So the quantity of airstrikes will not de decrease, but will remain the same or will increase. It depends on the, the intensity of the Western supplies to Ukraine. And the second one, yeah, we need the air defense. We we need. I I think that um, uh, the Americans will give us the, this air defense in the future. But uh, we need, the problem is that we need them not now. We 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 need them for tomorrow. So yesterday. Yes. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yes. Yesterday. 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 Before yesterday. Before, before. Or even before <laughs> yesterday. A couple sure. years ago. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and let's keep the last question, which is also very interesting, the 9th of May. So this is the sacral date for Russian regime. Here we have two main questions to go to for discussing. Uh, the need for Russian military to show the, their leader and the Russian people some victories on the front. And the discussed in media possibility of declaring the war against Ukraine. So uh, now we see that Russians uh, is waging war with the, the troops that it had and been creating uh, during the last uh, last ten years. But uh, uh, the, the, he's uh, running out of these troops and, and weapons, and he have to to fill the gaps in in the in the in the in the personnel and in uh, weapons. And to have the reserves to continue the offensive operations and to keep the captured territories. The main reason for the general mobilization in, in Russia is the, let's say, military need. So they need personnel and need, need more weapon to continue waging war against the Ukraine. But there are a lot of factors that they against against uh, this. So first, it's uh, very expensive. Uh, Came to conduct the general mobilization, they have will have the problems with uh, supplying, so they have to, to take the, the 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 weapon from the from the storages. Will be the the old one, the Soviet weapon with the very uh, dubious uh, combat uh, combat uh, abilities. Also, they will have a, a lot of time for um, for uh, for training of the mobilized uh, personnel, but they are running out of time, uh, and uh, Ukraine will not uh, sit and wait for for Russia to conduct its um, mobilization. So we'll uh, use this time for our counter attacks, especially uh, given the fact that we will. Uh, obtain more and more uh, Western uh, equipment. So uh, Russia, I think Russia will be in a hurry and will try to, to fill the gaps uh, with these mobilized troops, just to, to fill the gaps. And the, this uh, mobilized troops will be uh, badly trained and will be in fact the cannon fodder. And uh, might be the, the, the maybe the biggest problem for Putin's regime that he cannot predict the uh, social reaction uh, as a result of this general mobilization it will be a big threat to to its uh, stability. I mean, it's not in Putin's regime and the whole situation in Russia uh, at all. Uh, Putin will have to acknowledge that uh, there is a war, not a special military operation. So he, he has to have to tell the truth to his population, and he has to acknowledge that uh, his first stage of the operation and the second one, which is uh, ongoing now, uh, they failed, and uh, no. Uh, goals of these uh, so-called military operations were uh, achieved. So uh, if uh, we think rationally, it's not a good idea to, to put in to uh, declare a general mobilization. But as, as uh, 
whole situation with uh, this Russian aggression against Ukraine so that Putin not often uh, is uh, acting rationally. So what do you think? I totally agree. Of course, these rumors uh, about declaring war to Ukraine or general mobilization, I think these rumors will not come true on 9th of May, because obviously it will undermine the morphology of uh, the victory day for Russia. It uh, doesn't correspond with uh, general uh, uh, ideas of their propaganda. But uh, instead, uh, this hidden mobilization will go on. I think that uh, uh, until the end of the year, and there were many um, messages on that in uh, uh, different Telegram channels, uh, it's, obviously it's a quite speculative topic, but uh, there appeared uh, numbers of uh, potential mobilization. And that is about uh, 400,000 troops that may be mobilized to the end of the, this year. But uh, still there is a question how Russian economy will grow. It, it is a big challenge for Russian economy and it will provoke uh, disrupts and conflicts inside uh, Russian elites. But at the same time, potential of uh, mobilization is still high. We should not underestimate it because uh, I'd like to uh, remind you just one uh, interesting fact that uh, uh, since uh, the July of, 20, of 2021, the total number of borrowers in Russia reached more than 40 million people. If we take in consideration that uh, the total population is about uh, 147 million, that means that, that uh, every third person is in debt. So that means that uh, low incomes in depressive regions of Russia will uh, provoke people and will uh, make them to choose this possibility to earn money by participating in so-called military operation in Ukraine. And uh, that pose a real threat for Ukraine, obviously, and that means that uh, Russia still have enough volunteers to mobilize and uh, throw them into the fire of this war. Uh, I not agree that this is a threat for Ukraine, because if we're talking about uh, Russian armed forces, I, I just uh, remind you that in 2010, they, they uh, started the huge uh, military reform and they uh, doctrinally changed the understanding of the armed forces. They told that you, uh, Russian armed forces should be ready for conducting two regional conflicts with neighbors without mobilization. That's why they started to create, since 2012, uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, permanent readiness uh, units, which is consist of professional contracts. And what we had now, they used all of these, actually, the, all of these units against Ukraine in the first stage of, of the war. And uh, very interesting to see that uh, uh, the, the people they trying to mobilize from uh, occupied territories of Donbass, they use equipment from the First World War and it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a real disaster. It, it means that since 2012, when they try to prepare uh, Russian units for to be a permanent readiness units, they uh, actually stole all of armor and, uh, and other equipment from the bases. So it means that if they try, I, I, I could suspect that Russian generals, they, uh, the, the main force, uh, actually the main, uh, the main force who, do, who, who doesn't want to, to organize mobilization because this mobilization will open all of this corruption. Yeah, because, the, yeah, they know the situation. Nothing. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. It, they, need, they need to open the bases and these bases just so, fake. It's so no okay. truth. The next stage of this situation will be questions. There is actually the armed forces, and they don't have these armed forces. That's why they're trying to find, rem remember these people from Africa, from the Middle East, mm -hmm. just to send them to the, to the uh, battle, battlefield and forget about it. Because talking about the Russian citizens, of course, 
step by step, it will be more and more tense situation when thousand and thousand true uh, thousand uh, uh, dead bodies will arrive to regions. Uh, it, it will be uh, more and more questions. What is going on actually? We, uh, uh, one, one thing, if you look in the t TV, some uh, some uh, everyday movie about the some series about the you bad Ukrainian Nazist and uh, great Russian armed forces uh, make something uh, uh, great successes. But if you understand it, your son or you you personally will send without without any equipment with a metal helmet uh, with uh, Vintovka Mosin or the rifle Mosin uh, to to battlefield. And I could uh, remind you that. In one month, Ukrainian armed forces will be 24th, 21st uh, armed forces, century armed forces, because of the land lease and another support. And Russian forces will be 19th century. Yeah, so so the, the, the situation will be totally different. Absolutely. So yeah, if so you send one, one million, yeah, <laughs> they told that 40 millions. Okay, you send two, can you imagine two millions people with a rifle, Mosin rifle to the battlefield? It will be one million dead bodies. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it will be uh, just the, the, the same situation and uh, as we can witness now in with these mobilized people of Donetsk or Lohansk. Yes, yes. Just with rifles, with uh, badly equipped, with, you know, uh, these old helmets, old rifles and so on. And after this uh, general mobilization, there could be just the, the situation uh, almost the same but in a larger scale yeah one million people with uh, absolutely low morale without any motivation without any uh, understanding what they're doing without any equipment so they will easily uh, reverse to uh, actually uh, uh, criminals which is trying to uh, return to the to return to Russian Russian territory and solve the the problem solve the question why they need to fight with Ukrainians because uh, can you imagine that uh, without tanks uh, yeah they statistically theoretically they have a lot of tanks but I'm sure it's not true they will so send... I, I don't I don't think that they will have uh, big problems with the motivation because as, as Volodya said they will have the could have the financial motivation uh, it's, you mentioned that, but that you, guys you know during the you... mobilization they shouldn't have um, uh, a lot of money it's not the professionals they will no, get no, no, no. the chips for for yeah. I don't know for, and, for uh, one, one... and they don't have enough budgets uh, to pay their salaries absolutely the war absolutely. was not predicted in their budget planning for this year financial year but, no, but but the pro propaganda is doing its thing yeah. so they are telling people why they are going to, to ukraine to, to find ukraine and they will uh, of course they will do some uh provocation in in this maybe yeah, but uh, organize this uh, mobilization not in all russia but in the regions that have borders with ukraine global post borders with ukraine so and they will uh, make some you know they can use even the chemical weapon uh, against it's uh, it's possible uh, what, I, what i think what i think mm -hmm. talking about the uh, not mobilization but uh, hidden uh, cover recruit recruitment will be mm -hmm. uh, definitely they will try to, to get some, uh, not of course one million people, but uh, kind of uh, several thousand uh, people trying to send them on on uh, on very bad very bad areas of the battlefield, trying to trying to close the the lack of the personnel there. And yeah, but, the, but what for the, the the idea is to for us and to fill the gaps. Yes, yes. I, what, what I think that <clears throat> of course the. The Russian generals, they are not dumps, they, they are not idiots. They, they understood from the first day, maybe from the second days, that, they, that, that it's a total disaster. It's total disaster for them, total disaster for this operation, total disaster for Russian armed forces because it's something, something crazy Ukrainian. They, they thought that Ukrainian armed forces won't fight, they, they, they finish. When Ukrainian forces started to fight, they they understood that they need to do something and as i understand my explanation the generals trying to uh, 
uh, trying to uh, uh, use all of possible forces, all of possible personnel to show Putin that it was his decision and it was a wrong decision that Russian forces uh, actually sacrificed everything, all of soldiers, mm -hmm. all of tanks, all of uh, great technologies, but because of the bad intelligence, because of the bad uh, FSB information, because of the bad solution and, and decision by Putin, they've got the cat catastrophe. So now I, I, I could explain for me, for myself, uh, Russian generals trying to create some, you know, the, the uh, uh, how to say, indulgencia for, for them. Mm -hmm. To say that we've done everything. Everything. Yeah, but, they, they, but nevertheless, they will be also under suspect because, you know, uh, the huge army, lots of weapons, lots of ammunition, and no reason. Lots of money. Lots of money. Lots of, lots of money spent, right? Absolutely. Spent. Lots of money spent. And the waste, it's another question. 12, 12 and years. Waste, yeah. And where are the results? At least something. Okay, you, you didn't have, didn't, uh, you couldn't capture Kiev. Okay, at least Azov style, at least Mariupol. Where? Yes. What I say, uh, unfortunately, right. the only success is again, we, we told it on the second question, it's missile strikes. So missile weapons, even if it's Soviet weapon, because unfortunately, our Western partners, they didn't hear us uh, a year ago, two years ago, that the main gap for Ukrainian defense is a missile and air defense. If you provide us more air defense, it won't be any operation because you need, in this case, even this uh, successful uh, instrument, missiles, won't be uh, actually uh, successful and uh, it won't be any, any sense to, to use it. It doesn't make sense to, to provide this all of these missiles attacks. So now I think that, uh, like conclusion to, to this uh, 9 May uh, case, I think that uh, I support Uyghur and, and Volodya that uh, Putin won't, uh, won't proclaim any war to Ukraine, any mobilization, any uh, uh, another strict uh, uh, juridical uh, decisions. Which will, which will be actually the cut of the maneuver for space of maneuver for Putin. He could use emotionally this nice of May, probably the base here, this victory psychology of Russians to ask them to, to ask them with all of people, with, with Russia in heart, in the, all of the world, uh, join Russian forces to attack Ukrainian Nazism and world Nazism, because he will say that it's not only Ukraine now fighting with Russia, but all of uh, Western Nazism uh, joined and, and has a uh, attack. Inclu in include, including Jewish Nazism. Including Jewish Israeli, yeah, Israel. So uh, I think that emotionally, yes, Putin will try to, to use this, but not, uh, not, not a concrete decisions like uh, CNN or I don't know, some Western... Mm -hmm. Media has told that it will be proclaim, uh, proclaiming a war, a war against Ukraine, mobilization, and all of these uh, uh, very, very strict, very concrete decisions. Actually, with uh, very concrete conclusions, uh, uh, very, very concrete results for an, an Im impact on on a Russian society, which is not uh, could be not very positive, not very positive uh, feedback from uh, Russian society. And of course, I am sure that. Uh, it's another aspect uh, what actually uh, Putin will try to to do in in situation uh, with uh, lack of the victories on uh, on the victory day. I think that Russian propaganda and, and Putin personally will blur the the situation. He will try to supersede the uh, victories uh, on on the battlefield by these victories on the Second World War and trying to more uh, use the more and more this Pabidabesia effect trying to close the lack of the victories on, on, on the special military operation. So it could be uh, the, the I, I think that maybe I could make a forecast. It will be less Ukraine that Second World War in this victory day. Less could Ukraine. Be, yeah, it could be the exit for him and say in such a manner he can uh, save his face. So uh, I'd like to, to, to stop our interesting discussion.
uh, today's uh, interesting discussion. I think what it was uh, interesting enough. And yeah, and we'll see what happens next week and what uh, topics we'll have to for discussion for the next time. Thank you again and see you next time.